everyone, and welcome into the FedEx Preview Show. I'm Jonathan Merriman, joined by Marty Snyder from NBC Sports. Marty, we had one heck of a race for a million dollars. Kyle Larson <laughs> wins the Open, wins the yeah. All-Star Race. You know, pretty good night of racing on Saturday. It was an excellent night of racing. First of all, the package, thumbs up. If that's what's coming in 2021, Jonathan, I think fans are really excited for what could be coming. Yeah, but for Kyle Larson and his race team, I think the biggest takeaway for me is the fact that they finally put together a complete race. You know, talking to Chad Johnson and the entire race team, for them, yeah, they'll carry the momentum into the 600 after the All-Star race. And yes, they know it was a completely different package than was in the All-Star race. But, but putting together the entire night, that's the big thing. You know, if there's a knock on the 42 team, it's that for three quarters of a race, they can be great. They can't put together that last quarter of the race. So not only did they do it to be able to make their way into the All-Star Race period, but they did it to win the All-Star Race. And I think that's a huge accomplishment for that race team. I think it really gives them momentum going into the 600. Yes, they take, they take the momentum from the win in, but they take in saying, hey, we finally put together a complete race, not only for the All-Star Race for the Open, but for the All-Star Race as well. And that's the big thing for them, putting together that last little bit of the race to be able to win it. Yes, Kevin Harvick, Probably had the fastest car, but they were able to get the win. All right, after the uh, the All-Star race, we saw a little Rock'em Sock'em Boyer <laughs> bots out there. I know, so Clint, the fast Boyer bots. Yeah, yeah, so Clint and Newman obviously not happy with each other after that race, the cool-down lap incident and then the fight on pit road. Is it done? Is it over with? Or should we watch those you, two guys? You would like to think so. I mean, I think Clint Boyer's, you know, veteran enough to kind of know how to move on from something like that. But for Boyer, for me, this really goes back a couple of weeks. I mean, you go back to Kansas, the end of that race, he was frustrated with Eric Jones. I think he came into the All-Star race with some frustration. They've had fast enough cars the last few weeks to be able to get to victory lane, and, and Clint just hasn't been able to get it done. They haven't been able to make the right adjustments at the end of the race to be able to make it happen. So I think, honestly, this is some frustration that goes beyond the Newman thing for Boyer. It goes back a couple of weeks. It goes in a little bit into the, how their cars have been lately, and then they've had enough speed to be able to win races. So I, I think Boyer moves on. He kind of puts it behind him. Hopefully Newman moves on, puts it behind him, and I think they go into the summer months. Because, listen, the summer months, are they're a grind, and, and you can't kind of go into that with some frustration already, or it can really boil over going into the playoffs. All right, so let's talk about the Coca-Cola 600, 600 miles of Charlotte Motor Speedway. That in itself is a grind. Gibbs and Penske, we've been talking about this yep. a little earlier today. Those guys have dominated the season, but we've seen teams like Stuart Haas Racing, yeah. Hendrick Motorsports, and now with that all-star win, Chip Ganassi Racing is up there in the mix as well. Will a Gibbs or Penske car win the Coca-Cola 600, or will somebody else jump up there and finally get a win? I think there's still the cars to beat, no doubt about it. I mean, they've shown the speed at all types of different tracks throughout the entire year. And I think when you look at the other organizations, yeah, they're starting to catch them a little bit. I think Stuart Haas has caught them from a speed standpoint. If you're looking at Stuart Haas Racing, I think all they really need are some execution pieces to be able to get to victory lane. You look at Harvick and the All-Star Race, I think clearly had the best car, obviously frustrated on pit road with what happened there. That's what kept them from getting to victory lane. I think when you look at Hendrick Motorsports, to me, they're still missing a little bit of speed. I think they need a little bit more to be able to catch the Penske's and the Gibbs and the Stuart Haas's, and then they need the execution as well. And you mentioned Chip Ganassi Racing. I think they're a little ways away from being able to compete with those groups. So I think, yes, yeah, Stuart Haas Racing, Hendrick Motorsports, they've kind of caught Team Penske and Joe Gibbs Racing from a speed standpoint, I think Hendrick needs a little bit more, but I think it's going to be execution that comes down to whether they can get to victory lane or not. We have an extra stage. That means we have an extra playoff point up for sure. grabs. We have an extra 10 stage points up for grabs. You can come away with this thing for with 70 points if you sweep. So that's a lot of incentive for this race. I think it's important. I think teams view this as an opportunity, and I think all they have to do is go back to the middle of September and say, hey, Look at how close it is when it comes down to the cut time for the playoffs to see who gets in and who doesn't. So yes, teams view this race as an opportunity, another chance to get those stage points. But more importantly, for the guys who are running up front, Jonathan, it's another chance to get that playoff point. And I think they are very aware of that and they understand that they have to be able to get up front and win these stages to get that playoff point. Very valuable. Let's talk about tire strategy really quick. We think back to Texas. Yep. Four tires didn't really mean that much. We look at the all-star race and four tires. If you didn't have four tires on your car, right. you were going back 
in, in a heartbeat. Is that just the age of Charlotte Motor Speedway yeah. showing through? And, and how cool will that be to, to watch that strategy play out? It's grip level, the racetrack, Charlotte starting to wear out a little bit. And I think that's very, very important for these teams to understand that, hey, you can play some strategy here. You can try two tires if you want, but four tires is going to be the key. When you fit is going to be a key. So I think, I think tire wear is very important. I think teams are very aware of that. And in a 600 mile race, how you manage that is very critical. And I think teams obviously know with those extra state as you mentioned and the 600 miles you've got to play that game correctly all right so with all that information out there who are you picking to win the race i'm gonna go with kevin harvick you know when kevin kind of motivates his team a little bit i think that team usually kind of responds so i think you know the stuart haas cars have had the speed i think the four team especially has had the speed over the last few weeks i think all they have to do is get that execution down make it happen i think kevin harvick gets to victory lane in the coca-cola 600. all right i'm gonna take kyle larson i have no rhyme or reason other than the fact that he just won the all-star race he's a millionaire and uh, uh, he's uh, he's got his team motivated, feeling good. So I think that. Carries I thought over. you'd take a Hendrick car after all the speed Bowman has shown and, and those guys have shown over the last few weeks. I was going to, but you talked me out of it. Before uh, the show. Okay, don't all let right. me talk you out of it. Go for it. Now the Coca-Cola 600, where you can watch it Memorial Day weekend, Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. Marty, we appreciate you yeah, joining man. us. We appreciate you watching us. Make sure you join us back here next Thursday. We're going to talk Pocono.